our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. And welcome, everyone. I am very excited about today's show. This is a technology I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time. It's a technology that supports this streaming show and podcast, and uh, for a good reason, because I'm really excited about this technology. I've used it myself. I'm interested in this phenomenon, and I have brought in the Chief Scientific Officer of Happy Technology, Brian Mogan, who's also an expert in translational science and neuromodulation. He has a PhD in bioengineering and brain computer interfaces, Brian Mogan. Dr. Mogan, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Excited to chat with you about Happy. Yeah, this is interesting stuff because I, I've been a, a really strong advocate for things like uh, CTU, transcranial you know, uh, magnetic alterations in brain chemistry to, as a therapeutic process, but it has always seemed to me that that kind of phenomenon can be used in many, many different ways. Talk to me about this technology. Sure, absolutely. So uh, like you mentioned, there are a lot of different kinds of technologies that claim to affect uh, how the brain works, how individual nerve cells work, whether it's uh, a focused ultrasound or TMS or pulsed uh, PEMF technologies. And, and HAPI is kind of a totally different evolution of the ability to use insanely tiny specific magnetic fields directly derived from everyday compounds. Uh, to create the similar effects without having to ingest uh, chemicals directly, basically recreate the effects of everyday compounds without ingesting Give an example. Uh, them. Which can, like what kinds of things? Uh, so things like uh, caffeine, alcohol, melatonin, uh, adenosine. You know, uh, the technology itself can be leveraged across pretty much anything that uses a non-covalent mechanism of action in the body. Explain to people what, they, what that means. Yeah, so if you think uh, back to high school chemistry, uh, when you remember that little molecule, every molecule has an electron cloud. Uh, those electron clouds move around really quickly around the surface of the molecule. And we have a technology that's able to record that specific uh, electron cloud behavior in a very, very tiny, one of the most advanced sensitive magnetometers uh, in the world, uh, and be able to recreate and replay that same magnetic field directly to the body uh, without having to go through the step of ingesting the chemical. What it practically means is that we can recreate the sensation of something like caffeine, alcohol, controlled by an app uh, through a wearable device without any of the side effects because the stimulation is local uh it's applied wherever you wear the wearable and then you can turn it off uh when you're ready to move on it's, a, it's essentially a headband but you can also wear it around your neck like almost like a necklace right and it still gets yep. where it's supposed to go right yeah. around and the, there's an app the that'll, and there's an app that lets you pick the particular uh substance or, or phenomenon you're trying to recreate that now again let's let's break down the chemistry a little more so you said non-covalent bonds it has to be a non-covalent bond describe what to people what that is yeah so in a lot of biology you have these kind of these molecules that bounce around and interact with other molecules without ever touching it's just the electric field of one uh, molecule creating the right pattern against the electric field of, of another. It's not uh, the same as like when you eat uh, and your body needs to physically break down sugar, uh, the molecule needs to be split. Uh, but there are effectively a bunch of signal cascades that can be kicked off that create these sensations uh, without ever having to actually touch. We can just recreate the correct 
magnetic field in the right sequence in the right area to get the same effect. So I, I'm used to thinking in terms of thermodynamics and not uh, electromagnetic. There's the happy right there. That's how you wear it. That's, that's it. That's the total device. That's, that's what we're talking about. This thing <laughs> just delivers this tiny magnet that you feel. Either it makes you like melatonin, like slow down or like caffeine, speed up, or you even have some attentional stuff too, right? Yeah, we're looking at uh, compounds that relate to sleep, uh, physical performance, and mood supplement. So everything from caffeine, melatonin uh, for sleep, adenosine to create the onset of sleep, as well as uh, compounds like uh, alcohol or CBD that can be used to promote relaxation without the side effects. I'm, I'm, when I think about biochemistry, I'm not used to thinking about electromagnetics. I'm used to thinking about thermodynamics and, you know, sort of energy states and, and heat states and things like that. And, and where these molecules go is sort of driven by thermodynamic processes. Tell me a little more about the electromagnetic piece. I'm not that familiar with it. Sure. So maybe one of the, the analogies to talk through is when you think about protein receptors, the kind of lock and key uh, mechanism for a receptor sees a uh, receptor site uh, and the molecule kind of slots in, the, the key slots into the lock. And if it's the correct key, then the lock opens, the protein changes and kicks off a set of pathways. Uh, well, for most interactions, that lock and key never physically touch. It's just the correct pattern of uh, points in the magnetic field of the of the receptor site matching up with the correct uh, pieces and components of the magnetic field uh, of the right. The, thus the non the molecule. Thus the non exactly the non covalent, so to speak. These are non covalent forces. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. I, as such, and then the idea is that once it's sort of resting in that, that uh, let's say, saddle or whatever, you know, how we want to think about the, the lock and key phenomenon, then some downstream, various kinds of downstream uh, mechanisms are triggered, either ligand or gated or, you know, second messenger. There's all kinds of other things that go on. Are, are all those mechanisms the, on, the, on display in what you're able to work with? Uh, at this point, yeah, there's there's about 15 years of benchtop research behind the technology that's been looking at academic work uh, across a variety of different kinds of small molecules and and whether that's going step by step through a process for signals related to chemotherapy and cancer drugs that can show step by step the protein pathways that happy technology uh, uses follow the same signature is the standard biology. Uh, we've also proven it out with larger uh, molecules, things like small, small size siRNAs. So the technology itself can be used for a variety of, of compounds. And, and that's what we've been focused on kind of on the benchtop level with our, our technology partners. And then on the behavioral side, you know, how can we get the device in in the hands of people and and bring the technology to market in a way that you know allows kind of this crazy new set of scientific advances to actually start helping people practically exactly I, that's that's right there is where the rubber hits the road i'm so excited about this thing I, when i first heard about it i'm like oh my god this is very interesting uh, and and i just i've been talking to you guys for a while try, trying to figure out how i can get involved with you because it's just it's, it's exciting and, and it's harmless talk to me about that that's the part i've had some people look at me go oh no free lunch in nature but this seems it's it's such tiny electrical impulses uh, talk to me about the safety yeah i think there's there's two ways to think about it one is the overall amount of of energy input right a lot of these other brain stimulation technologies use a lot of energy because they have to physically force nerve cells uh, to open up and fire action potentials. Uh, when we look at, at the energy output of happy, we're, we're not working in that world. We're kind of teasing very small receptors into activating. And we can do that with significantly less energy. We just need to whisper the correct pattern 
Um, so from a, an energy output perspective, there's some international agreed guidances uh, on the amount of, of magnetic field in a certain frequency space that you can safely um, kind of put out uh, without causing ionizing harm. Yeah, there's there's yeah. several different guidances for different parts and we're you know, almost 100x uh, under those across the whole spectrum. Well, I think right, the other piece right. uh, of that safety side is, you know, it's a it's a technology that you can turn off easily. You right. you push right. push play, it starts. You push stop, it stops. Uh, and at that point, you've you've kind of gotten yourself into the world of a drug with zero second half lives. Right. Oh, that's interesting. How do you prevent stimulating other pathways, other receptors, other phenomena in the brain? So the, again, the specificity really is that each signal is derived from an, a singular source compound. Uh, so there's, you know, the direct target effects only, uh, and we're not seeing interference off target effects, uh, or really kind of notable side effects in any way. So let, let's, I'm going to, I want to drill into that a little bit. So it's getting through the skull, right? Even though it's very low, very low energy, it gets through and it finds itself in the right place, right? It gets to the right receptors. And I think people are going to find that hard to understand. How, how does that happen? How does it end up just in the yeah, right place? So it's, it's one of these fun properties of magnetic fields. So electric fields are attenuated very quickly by your skin, by your bone, by your, you know, your brain is sitting in a bag of, of warm salt water. So all, all these electric fields mm -hmm. and, and technologies have to put in a lot of energy because they, they get dissipated on their way to their, their target. But magnetic fields uh, aren't blocked really by anything biological. So the, the device itself is capable of generating a volume of uniform magnetic field where we around the neck band where we can replay this correct signature and you know barring people literally wearing a tin foil hat or having a metallic you know brain uh skull implant the the signal isn't mm -hmm. disrupted on its way uh, to your body so it's so it's so hocus pocusy for people there that i'm sure it's hard for people that have not studied electromagnetics or or biology biochemistry it seems impossible but but i assure you it is not and i've been wanting to work with brian and maybe the somebody over there to develop a particular sort of pattern that i'm interested in trying to help you guys figure out my own signature pattern would that be possible that's absolutely possible i think one of the one of the yeah. key points that you know, you're going to see from from us and and from the direction of the company moving forward is, yes, there's there's the technology to supplement or work towards replacing harmful uh, ingestion of substances in in people's lives. But there's also, you know, the magic of and this is where the the magic of software and biology come together. We also get to provide all the digital tools that you're familiar with for scheduling routines and generalized healthy behavior change even outside of stimulation. So how, how can we combine, you know, what we're seeing in our early users uh, just behaviorally? Uh, how are they using the product, but also how are they building out, you know, their own programs, use cases, and, and what really ends up resonating with people? So how could it be like meditative or, or motivational, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. And to set a pattern to play back so that you are, you know, ready to get up and work through emails in the morning or uh, focus on your commute to work or relax on your drive home. It's really interesting. My, my son had a very striking response to the uh, focus uh, setting because he has a little bit of scattered you know attentional stuff and he he really thought it it, it did something 
Yeah, I think one of the the key pieces of the technology of the whole is is it's not a perfect recreation of the the source molecules, and and we don't ever expect the technology to get to a true one to one replacement uh, in terms of efficacy and in terms of, of sensation, but you know, kind of delivering and packaging up this watered down version, you know, 60 to 70% yeah. uh, response, uh, at least that's, that's the data we're coming in off of, of some of the bench top. And, and what are people research. saying, both users, users and in the lab, what are you hearing? Yeah. So like you said, the, really the first response is always, wow, holy cow, what a weird phenomenon I can, I can actually feel if I, if I switch from a feel sleepy setting to a feel alert setting, uh, I, I, did, I didn't expect it to work. So first, first is it, almost it's, always, yeah. you know, incredulous. And, yeah. and second is, uh, yeah. really the, the wheel starts spinning of, okay, so if I could do this instead of stepping out for a cigarette or instead of that third cup of coffee, maybe I don't need to run to the bathroom in the middle of my shift. And, and it's and your 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 point is I'm is exactly what I've seen with people, but it's 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 not like it's it's very subtle. It, it's it's like it's very subtle feeling. It's but it's it is definitely something. You're definitely it's not like coffee where all of a sudden you have a systemic reaction, your heart is pounding, and you're kind of stimulated. You're just aware that you're oh this I'm a little more something here. This is this is a, something's changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's you know again we're not we're not here to you know really create the next big entertainment tool it's a, a no, lifestyle no. wellness you know I'm, I'm i'm not even sure that we would want to blow your socks off if we could right right yeah that's not the idea the, the idea is enhancement improvement wellness yeah sleep better relax more easily get going more easily it just just it's just like that like you said like that 60 percent boost uh without any significant downside that's the part that i find extraordinary and then it, it talk a little more about you know your research when you were you know uh getting your phd i mean the, did you imagine that you would come up with this kind of technology is this something you foresaw down the line so to be to be clear, I am not one of the inventors uh, of the technology that's it's been in development uh, for many years since well before I was even in college, much less uh, finishing a PhD. But my my background was in uh, implanted brain computer interfaces, which was next mm. generation brain control of hand and arm movements, new spinal cord implants. Uh, in working in, in non-human primates. Uh, so I got to see all mm. of the cutting edge technology, the Elon Musk Neuralink style, crazy implants, long-term spinal cord, the, like the, whatever was, was at the cutting edge of being tried, I, I was very intimately familiar with. Um, and when I finished school and, and had been doing some other digital health uh, startup work at the time. I, I learned about uh, Happy just kind of through the the neurotech network that I had, and more or less said, "Yeah, I I, I need to go be involved in this. I haven't seen <laughs> a technology like this ever. Let's dive in. Let's figure out how we can you know productize it and bring it to bring it to the people who are going to be needing it most and and that's you know really one of the the things i love about the technology is it's something that nice. we can we can bring to people today you know this isn't something that needs to sit in an fda approval process for years right. and years and years right and um you know i i have grave concerns about Neuralink. I, it's one thing if you're providing an implanted device for severe disease like Parkinson's or or you're trying to restore a limb movement or something, but to take a healthy person and drill into their skull, you change that person forever. When you put a burr hole in somebody's brain, their personality changes, they get infections, they, they have all kinds of medical and biological problems that are completely separate from 
the brain technology interface. And when, you know, when they talk about neural, I just, I don't see any medical people. I don't see any biologists. I just go, oh, no, 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 no. You know, and, and talk, ask to a neurosurgeon about what happens when you open a skull and touch it with a instrument of any type. And by the way, the neural link would have to be replaced periodically. Each time you get near the brain, you are killing millions of cells and you are altering the function of the brain. That's a massive ethical problem, in my opinion. Yeah, I think there is some, there is some really great uh, philosophy of brain computer interfaces uh, work being done, funded by the US federal government. Um, one of my favorite philosophers is a, a guy named Tim Brown out of, out of Seattle also. Uh, but really just, you know, how do we understand yeah, the personality changes, the sense of agency changes that happen on, on brain implants is a fascinating topic. And again, I could talk for a some long of it is not the brain implant. Some of some of it is not the brain implant. It's just putting a burr hole in the brain, ma ma making a hole in the skull. You have alterations in all kinds of things. And uh, it's woo, real, I for, forget the, the effect of the technology. Just the procedure is so massively problematic for me. I, I, and again, this is, you know, thank, that's why I got excited about stuff like this. This is absolutely not going to have any of those any of those concerns it just isn't yes it's as non as non-invasive as it gets yeah yeah so how do people get it who do you want to get it talk about that a little bit yeah so we uh started the company kind of and and went through a product development cycle launched a campaign on indiegogo almost two years ago now and and currently are selling the product direct on our website. It's at happy.com. It's H-A-P-B-E-E.com. And the that's the pretty much the only place you can get the product now. We're we're going through the struggles and and growth problems that pretty much every technology hardware company is right now as far as the supply chain and manufacturing. So we're scaling up to be able to support uh, uh more partners. Uh and then you know who who is getting the device right now? We really started, you know, on the kind of crazy technology end of the spectrum with the the biohacking support uh, crowd, people looking to really optimize their performance. And and what we ended up finding, and we're continuing to find, is is that the technology is resonating a lot better with folks who have, you know, just kind of minor minor issues. Uh, we've very un or sorry rather very surprisingly found that uh it's resonated very well with the returning service members and and veterans populations oh. folks who have trouble sleeping um whether that's related to just kind of daily anxiety or otherwise you know something that that can be used as a tool to provide them a little bit of support just to to get through you guys have a whole study on that. I think I'm going to be interviewing somebody that was uh, lead in that study. Or was that you I was going to talk to about that? No, I think you're going to be talking to one of my colleagues yep. or one of the the yep. veteran lead organizers uh, here Great. shortly. I look, um, can't wait. Yeah. I'm really excited. They found uh, some pretty wild results. I actually don't even have all the data. I, I just saw the summary earlier today. Uh, but some very, Fantastic. very exciting biometric and, and personal response studies in, in veteran populations. And we're in the middle of building out, Amazing. you know, more data and support on, on sleep and, and really as a company, uh, and I personally find that, you know, sleep ends up being a key factor for pretty much all problems that, that you have sleep influences, oh, uh, your digestion yeah. it's, and, and I'm, I'm sure you've spoken about it at length right it's an essential tenant of of how your biology and your brain functions every day that's yeah brain health you know. for sure and in both in terms of sustaining it and in terms of its day in day out operation yeah sleep is a, a critical thing and we don't we don't think about it enough we don't evaluate it enough we have all kinds of sleep pathologies out there that we don't address and and you can be young and have some sleep problems. I mean, it 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 happens, yeah. and there's ways to optimize it. So that's interesting. I my bet is that this thing is so cool and so interesting. My bet is that it, when somebody gets one, they immediately get it as gifts for two or three other people. We have seen that quite a bit, or more commonly, yeah. 
uh, a husband and wife will buy one because, you know, the wife hears about it and, and the husband will try it and all of a sudden it's gone missing and she can't find the device right. she bought anymore and has right. to order another one because it's been co-opted. Right. Yeah, that happened with my kids. That's exactly what happened. So, yep. <laughs> well, well, listen, I, I, I really uh, appreciate being a part of this op this organization and uh, that what you're doing there and the research. And I just, I'm so excited about it. I just... I think it's just a, it's a, just a extraordinary little step forward uh, that I, I'm happy to participate in. It's not. Um, I'm not telling you it's going to change your life, and it's not to treat anything. It's it's really just sort of a, an optimization, a wellness little instrument that has kind of extraordinary little properties and potential to it. And and uh, God knows uh, in today's world, we we need those little nudges. We need those little moving us in the right directions. Uh, and so uh, I, I look forward to seeing what else you guys come up with. And I look forward to talking to the uh, researchers on the on the veterans, uh, the veteran research, because that uh, such a population that needs so much. And if you could help them with this, it's just, to me, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Brian Mogan, PhD. You can see more at hapb.com, H-A-P-B-E-E. -E. Do you have your own personal website or anything you want to refer people to? Uh, no, at this point, just, you know, all my online. I've been busy trying to build uh, the, the product and haven't built out a presence uh, myself. Occasionally, I'll uh, uh, throw a comment on Twitter. But uh, okay. there, it's easy to find <laughs> right, me well, just okay, under well. my real so, name. So <laughs> that's that's about where I am. Brian Mogan. And and if people want to purchase a and happy, they just go to the website and it's just like yep. using any other website. To happy purchase .com, a you'll, or something. Yeah. you'll see it right there. Yeah. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Good. Absolutely. It's a pleasure All talking right. to you.